Hi guys, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today I wanted to do a video on the subject of atrial fibrillation and in particular I wanted to talk to you about the role of echocardiography, the role of echo in atrial fibrillation. A lot of patients with atrial fibrillation have an echocardiogram but what a lot of people don't understand is why they need the echocardiogram and what is the what is the information that is particularly useful uh, that an echocardiogram can give you if you have atrial fibrillation. Uh, so here goes. The first thing to say is an echocardiogram is an ultrasound based assessment of the heart. Okay, It is painless, it is harmless to the patient, it is readily available in most hospitals and it can give a very large amount of very useful information both about the structure and more importantly about the function of the heart. Okay, Remember a lot of the imaging that we do uh, is based around taking still pictures but the heart is a moving object and therefore uh, in an ideal world you want to be able to study the movement and you want to be able to study the changes that are occurring in the heart with that movement i.e. the physiological changes that are happening in the heart and echocardiography is the best investigation to give you that information. Now there are five particularly useful things an echocardiogram can tell you if you have atrial fibrillation. Number one, as atrial fibrillation can sometimes be caused by a structural problem with the heart, such as heart valve disease or heart muscle weakness, an echocardiogram will help elucidate that. So it can help tell you whether your atrial fibrillation has been caused by a structural problem with the heart. For a lot of people, the atrial fibrillation just occurs because they're getting older and because of lifestyle, but in a small group of patients, it could be because they have a cardiomyopathy that they didn't know about, or they have valve disease that they didn't know about, and the atrial fibrillation is the first sign that um, something's going on with the heart. When you echo them, you see that actually they have a narrowed heart valve, or they have a, leaked heart, a leaky heart valve, or they have a weak heart for some reason. So in that sense, an echo is extremely useful. Secondly, uh, and really importantly, the echo can assess the size of the atria. Remember, in atrial fibrillation, it is your atria, the top two chambers of the heart, that are not contracting, that are not contracting effectively. And if your atria look very big, then it tells us that the changes in the atria have been going on over a period of time. If the atria looks small, then it tells us that the atria are still healthy and something else has just pushed them over the edge. But the atria are not diseased, they've not gotten bigger and flabbier and weaker. Um, why is this important? Well, it tells us about how long the changes have been going on in the heart to cause the atrial fibrillation. If the atria are big, it looks, it sounds like, it seems like things have been going on for a long period of time. Uh, but more importantly, if the atria are very enlarged, then it makes it unlikely that you will be able to get the atria back into a normal rhythm, either via shock treatment, cardioversion, or an ablation, uh, because the changes in the atria have been going on over a long period of time. So ablations, cardioversions, that kind of thing, work best if you have small, tight atria, rather than very big, flabby atria. So that's another really important bit of information you can get from an echocardiogram. Thirdly, uh, I think it's very important to realize that one of the major risk factors for strokes in atrial fibrillation is the presence of heart failure. I, if your heart is weak, that increases your risk of strokes if you have atrial fibrillation. And an echo will give you that information. You will not get that information from the ECG. You will not get that information from what the patient tells you. The thing that will give you that information is the echocardiogram. So, you know, if someone says to me, look, I don't have diabetes, I don't have high blood pressure, I'm not too old, um, I, my risks are low, I would say, yes, but have an echocardiogram, make sure your heart is not weak for whatever reason, uh, because if it is, then that does increase your risk of strokes. Uh, so it helps with risk assessment. Uh, next, sometimes when the heart, when the heart goes into atrial fibrillation, not only is the heart beating irregularly, but it can beat very, very fast. When the heart beats very fast over a prolonged period of time, it can actually cause the heart to weaken. And this is called a tachycardia-induced cardiomyopathy. 
So the echocardiogram is useful but it, because it can um, identify a tachycardia-induced cardiomyopathy and therefore guide appropriate treatment. The good news is that with appropriate control of the heart rate in atrial fibrillation, a tachycardia-induced cardiomyopathy can easily be reversed, but it's important to know about it in the first place. Finally, um, I guess there's some heart rhythm control medications which are contraindicated in patients with structural heart disease. One of the commonest medications is called flecainide. There was some evidence several years ago that if flecainide was given in people with structurally poor hearts, structurally bad hearts, then there was an increase in mortality with this medication. So, you know, it's very, very important to have an echocardiogram to make sure you don't have any structural heart disease so that you can use medications like flecainide, which are actually very effective in trying to uh, uh, keep people in sinus rhythm or actually sometimes help get them out of the atrial fibrillation and get the patient back into sinus rhythm. So those are the reasons why what those are the reasons why echocardiography is a useful test in atrial fibrillation, and this is why I think everyone who has atrial fibrillation should have an echo. Uh, great, thank you so much. I hope you found this video useful, and um, I would love to hear your comments. Uh, and once again, I am so 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 appreciative of everything you do for me. Thank you so much. All the best.